Thank you very much. And also I want to thank uh, our keynote speaker and uh, the previous uh, presenters because uh, you managed to pave the way very nicely for my talk. Um, so um, this presentation is uh, talking about data and paperwork is uh, already now, we have set the stage already. So I will just focus on Central African Republic as a context. Um, this here, um, a summary uh, how the surveillance data reports come in every week across the whole Central African Republic. Every healthcare center has to send a weekly report to the district. And uh, this is the focal point of one of the districts in, in CAR. I will use the acronym CAR, Central African Republic. Um, and then here, this is written in French, that he will write either if they arrived late or on time, or if it's blank. So you can see kind of a Swiss cheese uh, data set model here as well. Uh, so the project, the MSF mission is in a district called Memory KDI. And uh, they have, um, the whole car has surveillance system that is known by SMIR, Integrated uh, Surveillance System for Diseases. And the acronym SIMR is in French. Um, the technology here is, um, is a software called Argus developed uh, by uh, WHO in Lyon uh, that is very simple that on the um, interface of the healthcare center, um, they have an Android phone that uh, has um, a graphical interface where the healthcare staff will just punch in uh, the data for 20 diseases and it will be sent in form of an SMS. So this is a hybrid model between having a graphical interface for an application, phone application, and it will be sent in form of an SMS. So 20 SMSs will be sent per every report because there are 20 diseases. And here it's in the uh, district, on a district level, where you have the laptop uh, and it, it, it acts as a form of a server. It receives all the SMSs and from here you can have all the outputs, either if you want to have it as a data set to have your own data analysis, or also there is an integrated dashboard. So I'm going to show you later uh, a snapshot of this form. And MSF here has done a form of a, a catalyst for this surveillance system. So the system has been integrated in places where MSF does not have operations and has operations, uh, has a mission. Uh, 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 presence. <coughs> this is a snapshot from um, the app where you have the report and you have an archive and also the healthcare staff, they can send an alert. And they have to fill in all the 20 diseases here and at the end they need to click to send it. And then it will be sent in form of SMSs, individual SMSs. Uh, talking about um, uh, technology, again, I will refer back to our keynote speaker, that you have to work with the people and you have to build a relationship and you have, uh, the technology has to come at the very end. So we started with phase one by having um, uh, reinforcement for surveillance concepts, working with them first before we introduce the technology. So we took this uh, um, project through three phases. Phase one, we had a four days workshop with them talking about surveillance, about different concepts, and we tested their knowledge um, before and after the surveillance, and there was an increase, and this is the data here showing uh, uh, an increase in the reporting system as well. So we, show, we found also significant increase in the reporting system despite the challenges of the, um, the, the structure of car, where you have to send your reports by a motor to, motorbike, motor taxi, and it's the clinic that they pay for this transport. There is no budget from the government, so it's basically they allocate the budget themselves, the staff. And despite this, we found really an increase uh, in the reporting system. So this was just after this training on the integrated surveillance uh, uh, information. Then we started doing uh, testing for the technology uh, in uh, among six clinics um, in, a, in a town called Berberati, which is the capital of this district 
member EKDE. And it was a fantastic experience to see how the staff started to react around this technology and to start to really think sense of community and not to only to focus on the trees, which are their patients that you see them every day, but also to think about the forest, about the community around them. Um, and of course, talking about uh, mobile phones and technology, we are talking about electricity. So we have uh, also installed um, solar panels for the clinics to, uh, that the uh, staff they can recharge their mobile phones. And we were testing, um, there was a, a question mark around the connectivity to the um, cell network and whether this will facilitate uh, the SMS transmission or not. So we decided to just have a couple of weeks of testing, so that was phase two. Now here, this is the map of um, the whole district. Um, the size of this district is almost equivalent to the size uh, of, um, of Belgium. So it's a large, it's a large district. And we have uh, 21 healthcare centers. The CAR has three major cell networks. We, so we have used these cell networks. On the western, southwestern part of CAR, uh, here there is no cell network from these um, cell coverage. So we have used cell coverage from Cameroon. So the SMSs were coming all the way, they would be sent from here to Cameroon back to here. The server is in, in Berberati, in this capital here. And um, in this clinic, in this one called Amada Gaza, and in, in this one called Bambia, and here these two, Jomo and Gadzi, the staff, they need to travel around 20 kilometers, 20 to 35 kilometers by motorbike to find also cell coverage. So then they can send their report and come back to the clinic. And the rest, uh, connectivity is, is, is relatively good. Um, and all the SMSs will be sent on a weekly basis and the server is here. Plus these, clinic, these healthcare centers are also inside Berberati on this blue dot. This is the data from the pilot. So the pilot was done here and the project called PAP, uh, Projet d'Alerte Precoce. Uh, this is the French acronym. Um, we looked at the completeness of the reports. WHO sets um, a cutoff point of 80% that of the completeness of reports. And this is here the beginning of 2016. These are the weeks. This is the percentage of completeness. This is the red zone that everything below 80 is a red zone and, and it has to be here above 80 as a green zone. So historically, CAR has never reached even above 50. So here in, at the end of 2015, we had the phase one intervention to uh, train staff on the concepts of surveillance. And since then, we start to see an increase. And then here we have a reduction this is the paper-based surveillance. The reason of this reduction, there was a vaccination campaign. So here, again, we are talking about uh, individuals that are in the limited resource settings where if there is a vaccination campaign, they are the one that will leave their clinics and healthcare centers to go and help in this vaccination campaign. So what happened here, they were away from their clinics. So there was no one to fill in the reports, to send it by papers. To the, uh, to the district office. But when they come home on the weekends or at night, they can actually fill in on their mobile phones and send it in as an SMS. So, there was a, uh, so this is the qualitative aspect of the study that everyone was questioning, oh, is it because of the mobile phones this is increasing, the, sorry, re uh, decreasing the, the paper-based surveillance? The answer is no, because the staff was away. One of the healthcare centers uh, also, th there was no vaccination in the area, but we haven't received an SMS or a, a paper um, form from them. And we did some investigation, what's happening? So the, uh, the healthcare uh, leader, he was away for three days because his son was having a surgery. And then everyone, everything kind of stopped. And MSF doesn't have a presence there as well. 
So all these little details, we can see that how much the role of individuals are really important here. It's about really people much more than about technology. Um, and of course, uh, we have the, 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 this is the distribution of diseases that showed up uh, during the piloting. And um, I will not go much into the details here, but there are many sites or healthcare centers that have been silent all these years. And now they start to show up and to, be, to send in the data about the diseases that are available there. So we have identified areas that uh, the Ministry of Health didn't know about what's happening there, MSF didn't know, and the staff also, they became more and more active in this because they could see that they can help on a larger scale and not only by treating their patients on a day-to-day -day basis. So as a conclusion, we have really found a significant improvement in the reporting system. Um, we have extended the pilot until the end of the year um, because uh, we want to really see on long term and not only short term effect how, how it's going to be. Um, the software has been updated uh, because we have also, as also the nature of softwares, we always see bugs in softwares. So um, we have updated the software and then in June, um, uh, there will be um, a new version installed. And uh, we have developed a GIS component as well to the software. So I will show you now a, a peek, uh, a snapshot of the GIS component that will be installed uh, in a couple of weeks uh, in the field. So here you see the map uh, of the district and then here you see the epidemiological week here you can see uh, the summary of cases uh, by we on a weekly basis on this axis. And then here the number of mortality, the deaths as well. And this red dot, it's a dot that you can slide it so over the weeks. So you can see over uh, weeks how the changes, uh, visual uh, changes happening in these areas. So the, um, this circle, light blue, it represents number of cases and the dark blue, it represents number of mortality. Um, and finally, I want to acknowledge everyone has been involved on this project because technology alone, without really the will of people, will die. It has no value. Um, so that's why I want to end with this <coughs> citation that it's really, it's about us as individuals to make a difference. Thank you.